Let's start by entering your name. Click into the text field here where it says student name. Type your name. Don't forget to capitalize correctly. Then you can click the big blue button that reads start test now. This will lead you to session one telling you that you have 23 questions to answer. Don't worry though, you won't answer all 23 of those questions at one time. You'll be taking multiple tests over multiple days. Let's just click Start Section right now. When you click Start Section, you'll see a page that looks like this. Let's familiarize ourselves with the page. Let's get used to it. Let's be comfortable with it. In the English test, first you should note this in the top left corner. The bold type tells you the scenario. The scenario explains what you'll be doing for the test. Let's read it together. Today you will read a story about a girl whose family is from India and a poem that expresses how the speaker faces frightening experiences. After you finish the task, you will write an essay about a theme in the story and the poem. The scenario explains what you'll be doing during the test. So, summarize it. They're telling you that you will read a story and a poem, and then after you've finished answering some questions, you'll write an essay. That's the entire test, and we'll go through step by step. Let's learn more about the window. Below the scenario, you can see the first text. When I use the word text, I'm referring to any type of writing. It could be a story, or a news article, or an encyclopedia entry, or even a poem. So when I use the word text, remember that I'm talking about anything that you will read for the test. This text is a story called Just Like Home. You'll read it first and then you'll answer some questions. You'll notice that it's in a window inside a window. This is your main window. This is your text window. You can scroll through this window and read your text. Notice that each paragraph is numbered. One, two, three. This will help you identify paragraphs that questions may actually mention. Over on the right, you'll see two questions. Actually, these are two parts of the same question, Part A and Part B. The first question asks about the word drift. The next question asks about a detail that helps you understand the word drift. So these two questions are related. When you answer a question, you'll be clicking in circles here, and I'll go over that in a moment. Let's talk about scrolling for a moment. It's very important that you learn how to scroll through a window in order to answer questions on a test. You can see that I'm scrolling through the big window, the main window. I can also scroll through the smaller window, the text window. You'll need to do both. You may be familiar with scroll bars. You can find scroll bars in the sides of windows. Here's a big scroll bar that you could click and drag. Here's a smaller scroll bar that you could click and drag. However, you may not want to use that. If you're on a Chromebook, you have two possibilities. You're either looking at a trackpad, or you might be using a mouse. Do you know how to scroll on a trackpad? It's pretty easy. You can do it with two fingers. Simply lay your two fingers on the trackpad and move up and down. Is that not clear? Well, let's watch this. Did that help? Practice scrolling up and down with two fingers. When you hover your mouse over the main window here, and you scroll up and down with two fingers, you'll scroll through, scroll through the main window. If you do the same over here in the text window, you'll scroll through that window. It's easy, right? What's that you say? You're using a mouse? Well, if you're using a mouse, sometimes you have a scroll wheel on the mouse, and it functions in the same exact way as the trackpad. Let's take a look at this.
So if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, practice in the same way I was talking about with the two-finger scroll. Hover over the text window and move the wheel back and forth. Now hover over the main window and move the wheel back and forth. Pretty easy, right? Let's pause the video so you can practice it for a moment and your teacher can check to make sure that you are scrolling up and down very easily. Are you ready to move on? Let's take a look at how you might answer a question. Let's read Part A. What is the meaning of the word drift as it is used in paragraph 18 of Just Like Home? Let's say that I want to answer wander. B. I can answer it simply by clicking into the circle. And that answers my question. I'm using what's called the pointer. The pointer looks like an arrow, except when I hover over the circle and it turns into a little hand. Let's look at part B. What if I want to answer A? I click right there in the circle. It's easy to use the pointer. The pointer is what I will also use to select different parts of the window and possibly tools up here in the toolbar. The pointer is your basic tool and you'll notice it's turned on right here. Sometimes I'll turn off the pointer but I'll talk about that later. Right now use the pointer as your basic tool for moving around and answering questions. Speaking of moving around Let's take a look at these buttons in the top left. When I hover over the one on the right, it reads, go to the next question. Click on that. Now, the left button highlights blue. It tells me that I can go to the previous question. These are the navigation buttons. And the navigation buttons allow me to move from question to question and back again. It's very important to understand that even though you can move from one question to the next without answering one, you must be very careful. Try to answer every question before you move on to the next one. And remember that moving back and forth doesn't mean you're simply finding a question that you would like to answer. You must answer all of the questions on the test. But if you move forward to one question and then to the next, and then to the next. You may have missed one, so be very careful. Let's navigate back and forth for a moment. Now, let's go back to question one. You'll see that it states right here, one of 23. When you're at question one of 23, Let's use the navigation button again. Press forward once, twice, and three times. Something just changed. Did you notice what changed? Here in the text window, it changed from a story to a poem. Now you're reading a poem instead of a story. Remember what the scenario stated? It stated that you would read a story and a poem. Notice that when you went to slide 4 with question 4, it changed to the poem. But the scenario has stayed the same. You are in the same test, and you're still thinking about the themes that connect the story and the poem. Reading the story and reading the poem should work together, and you should think of both. But you'll notice that much of this window does not change. The scenario is the same. You still see a part A and a part B even though the text has changed. Let's look at another tool that's actually pretty awesome. Your teacher may have told you before that in answering multiple choice questions you should cross out items that you know are wrong. Well you can't exactly do that on an online test, right? The pen won't work on your screen and you'd be silly to try. However, you can actually cross out an item on an online test. It's called the Answer Eliminator, and you can find it up here in the toolbar. Notice when I hover over this button, I see a callout that states Answer Eliminator. Let's turn that on. Notice that when I turn it on, the pointer turns off. That means I'm no longer using the pointer. I'm now using the Answer Eliminator. 
Let's move down to part A. Hover over answer B. You see that little X that kind of shows up? Click. You've just crossed out B. Click. You've just crossed out C. What if you didn't want to cross out B? Well, even simpler than an eraser, click again and you can take that X off. The Answer Eliminator is an excellent tool to cross out items that you know are wrong. Your teacher has probably encouraged you to do this and you can still do it on an online test. Let's pause so you can experiment with that. Now that you've played with the Answer Eliminator, let's remember that you can't answer the question until you go back to the pointer. So click on the pointer and then answer the question. And answer the question. Remember that you should answer every question by using the pointer to enter into the circle. Once you're finished with that, let's move to question six. Click and click. Question six looks quite different. You don't see a part A or a part B. This is a drag and drop item, and it's kind of fun. Let's read the question. Complete the chart by matching each structural element to the story or the poem. You may drag and drop some structural elements more than once. You may not understand what is meant by structural elements right now, or what the question is asking you to do, but you can see that it says drag and drop. Don't worry about the rest. Let's just practice drag and drop. Click on any one of the items, like I'm clicking on paragraphs, and move it. I've just answered the question. So I'm stating that paragraphs are part of Just Like Home, and dialogue is part of Just Like Home. Stanzas are part of Life Doesn't Frighten Me. Rhyme is part of Life Doesn't Frighten Me. Rhythm is here too. What about setting? Do I have setting in both? Let me place setting in Just Like Home and see if I can place it again in Life Doesn't Frighten Me. Yes, it will allow me to place setting in both boxes. So be careful when you're clicking and dragging. But the drag and drop is a standard item on some of these tests. You'll see it often. So let's pause for a moment and practice your dragging and dropping. Now that you've practiced dragging and dropping, you might notice on the left side, tabs. Remember that we are reading two different texts. One is a poem and one is a story. When we read the two different texts, you'll see that at some point, tabs will show up. What if you need to read both texts, but you don't want to bounce back and forth from window to window? The tabs will allow you to move back and forth. Click on one to read the poem. Click on the other to read the story. In this way, you can answer a question that addresses both texts. Let's see how that works with question seven. Move to question seven. Remember what the scenario stated? At the end of the test, you'll write an essay. Where will you write it? Here, in the text field. It's that easy. And your text will type just through the keyboard. You can use some of the basic tools like bold, italicize, underline, bullets, numbers, cut, copy, paste, and so on. If you make a mistake, you can undo. And if you want to redo, you can click that as well. When you are writing a new paragraph, you must press Enter.
Every time you press enter, an extra space appears to mark the division between one paragraph and the next. You don't even need to press tab or the spacebar five times to indent. Just press enter and you'll see that pretty easily. Why don't you practice for a bit? Enter some text into the text field. See how well you can do with it. Once you've finished playing with the text in the text field, let's move back to question number two. Remember how we do that? Go to the navigation buttons at the top. Let's click go to previous section question until you see two of 23. Two of 23 is a little bit different. You'll see that again it's not a part A and a part B, but as you scroll down you'll notice it's not a click and drag item either. Whenever you see something highlighted in blue, you'll know you're supposed to select that. This is a sentence select tool. Let's read the question. Select three phrases that help describe the setting in the column titled phrases that describe setting. Then select three pieces of supporting evidence in the column titled evidence from just like home. So. Let's say I believe that the setting is a playground with a large cement area. I click that. Let's say I read a long driveway with room to welcome guests and I believe no, that's wrong. I leave that alone. You'll see that I have one, two, three, four, five options. I must select three. When you select an item, it turns from blue to yellow that means that you've answered it. Read the question carefully. Notice the bold. I must select three phrases in the column that's headed phrases that describe the setting and three phrases in the column that's headed evidence from just like home. As always, read questions very carefully. Once I've selected three from each column, I've answered it and it's correct. Again, read carefully and select. Why don't you try it? When you have finished, let's take a look at a couple of other buttons that you might have seen up at the top. You'll see these buttons labeled Review and Flag. These are very important and they're pretty cool. What if you wanted to check how many questions you've answered? Well, click on Review. Look at what appears. A column labeling the question, question 1, 2, 3. The status, you've answered it, not answered it, or possibly not even viewed it. What if you can't remember if you've answered all of your questions? This is how you find out. And if I say, wow, I haven't answered question 3, I should do that. I can go immediately to that question by clicking View. That takes me to question three. Try it. Go back to Review and click on any question that you want to examine. Go back to Review and let's go to question six. Let's say that I've answered this question but I'm not sure that I'm correct and I might want to come back to it later when I have extra time. How do I remember that this is the one I want to examine? Well, you can flag items. Click the flag button. You don't see anything show up. The button is pressed, but you don't see any red flag until you go to the review section. Now you'll see that this item has been flagged. What if you want to only see flagged items? See these buttons here? I can look at all the questions, just the ones that haven't been answered, or just the ones that have been flagged. The review menu and the flagging will help you navigate through questions and control them. You'll know exactly what you've answered and what you haven't answered. Click on all to see all the questions again. How about taking some time to look through it? Check out what you're doing with the review window. Click the review button, flag some items. Take a look at how it works. Now that you've had a moment to play with the review window, 
Let's scroll down and go to question 15. I've gone to a different English test, but don't worry about that for the moment. What we should take a look at is the fact that yes, you are watching a video. Amazing, isn't it? Now you'll take tests where you watch videos as well as read short stories, articles, and poems. If you've ever played a video on YouTube or something similar, then you've probably already mastered the video player. But let's try it anyhow. When you click on the big play button in the middle, the video plays. We're coming to the Cheeky Pony Swim because we love to watch the pony swim. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. Um, I just love seeing the horses catch up, go on the swimming in the water, and then, um... Clicking on pause will pause the video. Clicking on play will play it again. See how pause and play. Good people are and, and I love Let's pause. I can adjust the volume by clicking up and down on this scroll. We're, we're sitting here waiting for the horses to Raise swim. Raise the volume. And our job Lower on this the side is to make sure that they uh, don't go through the back fence, keep them in until they get rested, and then we take them down the street to the corner of the ground. You have one other control on these videos. Take a look at the question over here, Part A. In Part A, I'm asked to watch the section from 0, 40 to 138. That means from 40 seconds to 1 minute and 38 seconds. How do you do that? Well, look here. You can click and drag back and forth to find a point that you want to watch. If you're supposed to watch from 40 to 138, how about starting at about 35? What will happen is that the, the Coast Guard will set off a red flare when it becomes slack tide. They swim at slack tide, whether it's high or low water. Once they see the flare, they'll bring the ponies down the, the marsh here across the, across the inlet. And uh, then they'll run them in the water and they'll swim straight across here. They'll be herded by boats. And so as you're watching, you're thinking about this question. This is what you do to review video. But remember, if you're reviewing video, that means you've watched the entire video already. This video is not very long. It's two minutes and six seconds but some questions may ask you to review certain sections. So review those sections when you're directed and control it. Find the timestamp by using the scroll bar here. Video interaction can be a fun way to take a test. So try it for a little bit. Experiment with the video and try to find a specific timestamp. Once you've finished with that, let's look at one last question. Go to your review. Scroll down until you see question 19. Click on view. Have you noticed anything different? Well, yes, we're in a different test with a different scenario and a different short story. That's certainly true. But what do you notice is different about this? Well, you may have noticed that instead of having only four options, you have six. You may have also noticed that instead of seeing circles next to the items, you see squares. Why is this? Let's read. Based on the story, which phrase best describes the shoes? Select three phrases from the list that accurately describe the shoes by checking the boxes next to the three correct answers. Three answers. You have six options, and you must answer three. So. When you see a square, you know that you can answer more than one of those items. This is called multiple select, and it's different from multiple choice. A multiple choice item only offers one answer. Multiple select asks for three. Confusing? It could be, but notice that the question will bold the word three twice, and you'll see these squares. So when you see the squares, and you read the question noting three, you'll note that you must answer three items, not just one. Remember, the way you master the test is reading carefully. You may wish to scroll through and see if you can find any other multiple select items. 
you won't find as many as you find multiple choice. But as you move through the questions, using the navigation buttons, check out the circles versus the squares, and contrast. When you see here, question 18, you'll see circles. And on question 19, you'll see squares. Move back and forth, taking a look at the items, just to make yourself more comfortable with them. Once you have finished the test, you will see this. So move to 23 and then press forward again. When you see this, you'll know that you finished, but you may not have answered certain questions. Read carefully. The last section has 17 unanswered questions. There are two things you can do. Review section questions and your answers, or exit the test. Let's go back to review. You see it takes us back to the review screen, and we can look at questions that have not been answered. When you see this, click on Review Answers. Do not click Submit Final Answers until you've clicked Review. If you see a flagged item, go to it. If you're satisfied with your answer, unflag the item. Do not complete the test until you have reviewed the review window, you've answered all of the items, and you've addressed all of the flagged items. Once you've done that, you may be ready to submit your final answers. Always listen carefully to instructions from your test administrator, the teacher that's in the room helping you with the test. Be careful about submitting final answers until you're absolutely ready. And remember, use your time to review as you wish. This has been a lot of information, but we have no doubt you'll be able to master it. Experiment with the test tutorial, play with the tools, and you'll be ready for success. Good luck.